I'm not even sure how you follow that. Um, I think uh, I think you bring the person from out of town and make them follow the awesome speed painting. So this is my first trip to Bangalore, um, and first I want to start by by thanking Feroz and his team for inviting me to be part of IIS. It's um, I heard him say you're not supposed to use the word inspirational. I was actually going to use the word impressive. It's impressive the collection of people that he's brought together, um, the people that are up here speaking, but also the fellows and, and the different things that they're looking at and trying to come up with creative solutions for problems that, that many of us didn't think of as problems that needed to be solved before someone takes a fresh look at them. And so when I came across town the other day and I was looking around, I look up at big shiny buildings and they say SAP and Cisco. Um, it looks a lot like the Silicon Valley where we're from. And one of the things that we do at the Silicon Valley and one of the things that people do so well here is use technology to solve problems in a way that no one's ever thought of before. And remember, it's not the technology that excites us. It's the solution to the problem that excites us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do at Cognoa, but I want everyone here to think of this as not about a company or a product. But think of this as a story that everyone can think about how technology can be used in ways that maybe people hadn't thought of before. So at Cognoa, what we really focus on is helping parents and empowering them to better advocate for their children, understand the signs of developmental delays and autisms early, and then help navigate their whole family to better outcomes. And this can have lasting impacts. So, a pretty famous graph that we use in the United States a lot, and any of you who, who have a personal interaction with autism or have spent time looking at autism have probably seen a version of this graph somewhere. This is a graph showing the increase in incidence of autism, and it's based on United States data, um, where the data's been quite good. People like Autism Speaks have done a lot of, spent a lot of time and energy measuring this over the years. But we see this mirrored all over the world. And what you see is an alarming rise. You see autism is, is growing very, very quickly. And there's a number of reasons for this. Certainly, we have more awareness. People know what autism is today. Many people that didn't know not that long ago. And so that gets more people diagnosed. But if you look at the increase in awareness, you look at the ability to put more people in the diagnosis, it still doesn't explain this graph. There is something going on, more and more pure, more and more children are being impacted by what we now call autism. And it's not just about awareness or diagnosis. It's about a true change. And so we need to come up with better tools because the time and effort and waiting involved in getting a diagnosis is only getting worse. So if you, a little bit about India. When I started to look into not just the United States numbers, but getting a chance to come over here, um, there's not a lot of great data in looking at India in terms of looking at the rates of autism increase. But there was some interesting data that's been done just a few years back that suggests there are now 10 million children in India living with autism. Just think about that number for a second. I mean, here, um, you know, a million's not a lot, as someone said earlier. In the United States, we still think a million's a lot. Um, but 10 million is a lot, right? And if you look at some of the studies, they start to suggest that the autism rates here are starting to mirror what we see in the United States. In the United States, the last measure is one in 68. Um, and some of the studies here show that it might be getting as high as that. And in the past, it was one in 150. It doesn't really matter if it's, if it's one in 66 is the right number. But if it's anywhere around that, and you look at the population of India, which when people like me come from the United States or come from Europe, it's a little staggering to understand just the immensity that is India. And if you think about that, and you think about these numbers, and you look at the population rate, which right now, um, 330,000 330, children are gonna be born in India this year. That means that one, at one in 66, that means one child is born with autism every two minutes. That means there's already been four children born with autism since I started speaking. And I talk fast, right? So this is a problem that's only getting worse. And so we decided to think about what's a technology solution that can help us address that. So I'm gonna show you something here to give you an idea of how parents can help. 
And one of the ways that parents can help their own children is by seeing the signs and symptoms of autism and developmental delay sooner. And then I'll show how you want a way to take technology and try to, try to help them do something with this information. And so here's a, I'm going to show you a video of a child. And we're just going to watch it for a second. It's not very long. And we're going to watch a child, Charlie. Charlie's three years old. And Charlie is playing with her favorite toy in this video. And I don't think there's that many people in the audience that are trained to detect autism. So I want everyone just to watch this for a minute and watch how Charlie plays with her tea set, her favorite toy. This is her favorite toy, but Charlie doesn't play with her tea set like her older sister. She doesn't pretend to pour the tea. She doesn't have a tea party with her dolls or with her other toys. She lines them up by size and shape across the table, and she does it again and again. And Charlie's mother doesn't know what this means, but she thinks it means something, and she's right. The studies have shown that the number one predictor of a child getting a diagnosis of autism or serious developmental delay is early expression of parental concern. It is more indicative than what your doctor says when you go in. It's more indicative of other things in your family. It's the single biggest predictor of whether or not that child will have an autism diagnosis. And it turns out that parents are right. Parents can see things. And so now we're one of the companies that's using technology to try to help them make sense of this. So here's the problem. The problem is that every child starts to develop these signs and symptoms, many of them quite young. The average age in the West that a parent sees the signs and symptoms of autism is 18 months. And yet, as you can see from this graph, parents not knowing what to do with that information, doctors not knowing what to do with that information, it causes delays of up to three years. The average age of diagnosis in the United States is almost four, all right, almost five. And so children are waiting almost three years to get diagnosed. And what you see from that area highlighted in green at the bottom, this is the most important window to work with these children. While they're learning their language skills, while they're learning their social skills, this is when therapists can have the greatest impact. And we have now built a system throughout the world that the children don't get diagnosed and start getting treatment until the window of the greatest benefit has already passed. And so we've started thinking about what do we really need to do? And what we really need is we just need to change the process. Parents need to get these answers earlier because parents are the greatest stakeholder in the system. They understand, they see it first, they understand what their children need, and they will do whatever it takes to help their children get the help they need when it can do the most good. The reason we want to do this, obviously, is it's not just about getting children help early. It's the fact that when you help these children early, it helps everyone, right? For parents, most parents come through, they find that their concerns actually didn't mean anything. Most parents find out that their child are doing fine, and people start talking at different speeds or at different ages. And this is just part of being a parent. Being worried about whether or not your child is on track is part of being a good parent. I'm a parent. We all worry about our kids at some point. That's the job, right? But when there are signs of developmental delay, getting early intervention changes the trajectory of that child's life forever, right? The studies have shown if you can start working with these children before three years of age, it puts them on a different trajectory for the rest of their life. And for many children who start much later, they never quite catch up. And so it's all about impairing parents, parent, empowering the parents giving them peace of mind that they know what they're looking at and how to help. So if you think about it, if you really want to find the children with autism and help them early, the best way to do it 
is to get every child, right? If you could really reach out and think about screening every single child, you'll find the child that need the help, and you can maybe even start finding them earlier. And so when you think about this, even at one in 68, or if it's one in 150, you've got to look at a lot of kids to find very many there. It's not a huge number, right? It's somewhere between one and a half percent or even half that. And so when you think about this, it's a little like finding a needle in a haystack, right? And we have a system where we have doctors who when they see things that look like needles, they refer them in to, ref in to see other doctors, and that's why it takes so long. If you think about technology, technology allows us to do things that we could never do before. And so what we think about when we first sat down to solve this problem is if you want to find needles in haystacks, let's build a machine to process entire haystacks, right? In, in when I was in business school, they used to say, never come up with a business plan that says you have to boil the ocean. But you know what? Today, we can boil some oceans because we have technology that allows us to do things that looks at huge, huge numbers. And so that's what we've started to do. First off, you need to build the haystack. And it turns out that mobile technology allows you to do this. Everyone in this room has a mobile phone in their pocket. I would, but I took mine out because I was sure it was going to ring in the middle of my talk. Um, but mobile technology allows you to reach out to tens and tens of millions of people. And so that's what we started doing. That's how we got a quarter of a million parents to engage with our app and 150,000 to use it in the first two years by putting it someplace that's just ubiquitous where everyone can see it. So then you can build a haystack. The trouble with building a haystack is then you have to process it. This is what modern technology can do really well. People hear about cloud computing. Um, Perosa worked in that group here. There's a huge cloud computing group here at SAP in Bangalore, right? Cloud computing allows us to do things that we never could have done with the computing power in a phone before. Machine learning is, is what is behind self-driving cars, right? Machine learning can look at immense amounts of data and can see things that our brains just don't look at very well. It can look across 10,000 decision trees instantaneously and find the best one. I have a hard time looking at one decision tree, right? This is what it does really, really well. So it turns out when you collect information from parents and you do it with hundreds of thousands or tens of millions of parents, you can use cloud computing and machine learning to instantly find the pattern matches. Of those millions of children, you can find the children that are, have conditions or have symptoms or have behaviors just like yours. And as we build the data set and we understand the diagnosis of other kids, we can start to tell parents years ahead of time to think what, what they're, the behaviors they're seeing at home, what they mean, and what type of diagnosis that is going to match to. And this information allows parents to engage with their physician and get the help they need for their children sooner, or in many cases, learn that what they were looking at is just part of growing up. So this is what a haystack looks like if you do it like we have in early autism screening. Um, the numbers are quite small, so, um, but there's 150,000 children populating this graph. And what you see there are a couple pretty interesting things. That circle is kids 18 to 36 months. These are the kids that are not getting screened very well in the current system. And by reaching straight out to parents, these are the kids that we find the most of. Because parents want to do the right thing. They just need a tool to do it, right? The other thing, if you can see the colors, the green were the kids that we looked at in this segment who were on track, um, who were doing just fine, and parents were just checking in. The orange are kids that have some signs of developmental delay. In our models, it does not look like autism, but things that parents can start helping and working on, like speech delay, things that are, that are simple and often easily resolved that the parent just knows. And then lastly, the red sliver at the top, it shows us that when we reach out to parents of young children, we find the parents that really have concerns, because clearly that's more than one and a half percent of the graph. And so when we reach out to parents through their phones, through social media, you can engage the parents that have questions. And when you give them answers, you can really make lasting changes. And so we talk a little bit about how we use the technology to do this, but the whole reason we do it is to change lives. And so I thought we started with a little story about Charlie and the behaviors that Charlie's mother was seeing and trying to understand it. And so I thought I would end with a, a picture of Ava. 
So Ava is one of the children that Cognolo has helped. Um, Ava's mother reached out to us um, about a year and a half ago. At, at 18 months old, Ava was a happy, smiling little girl who did everything that happy, smiling little girls normally do. But right around then, her speech development started to slow down. And she started to not move forward as fast as her older sister had. And then it started to go backwards. And she started speaking less and less. She wanted to be held less and less. And her mother didn't know what this was, but her mother thought that this is something I should find out about. So she was able to find a physician who said it looked like autism. She came to us, and we were able to help her get a confirmed diagnosis much quicker by giving her the information to better advocate for her child once she understood what it was. She was able to put Ava into an early intervention program, so at the age of 24 months, Ava started getting help. She started getting help every day and working on things. Ava's now five. Ava will be going to kindergarten next year. And based on where she is today, Ava will be going to a mainstream kindergarten. She'll be going with the other kids in her neighborhood. She won't be going to a special school. She'll be doing things for herself. And she will be on a trajectory of going to mainstream schools and high schools and having an after-school job and dating and everything that the other kids in her neighborhood will do. And this happened because Ava was caught early. And her mother now looks at us and says, if I hadn't known, I don't know what we would have done. We would have spent a couple years and we would have missed this window. And so we use technology. And as I said at the beginning, this is, a, this is, this is an area much like the Silicon Valley where I'm from, where we're all very focused on technology. But the reason that you use technology in a place like healthcare is to find the unmet needs that you can change in a way that no one else has ever thought of changing before. And so for us, it's about using machine learning and cloud computing to build an app that parents use. And parents have no idea that there's machine learning and cloud computing inside of it. They just know that they, they come in, they interact with the app, they provide some videos of their child, and they get an answer to start better advocating for their child. And I think there's so many people in this room and so many people we all know that work with technology, especially in this area, that there are problems out there, just like the fellows that we're talking about earlier. There are problems out there that we're all aware of, and there's technology out there, and all it takes is for someone to put the two together in a way that have never been put together before, and you have an innovative solution that can change lives. Thank you.